How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. This week, I'm gonna be tattooing my client's full chest piece cover-up. So with that being said, let's get this day started. Let's go! You nervous? Nah, man, it's just ready to get it on the way. Yeah, good. So this is all new from here yeah, on Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. That's a good song right there. Mm, 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 mm. So this is a project that I'm gonna be working on this weekend. We're gonna be doing a full chest piece and um, this cover up is over 10 years old. So the main thing that I gotta focus on is making sure that this scar areas of the lettering doesn't show through. So I have to be very careful with that. We also have to making sure how to navigate with this piece. We gotta take care of the highlights and the contrast because Tattooing a lighter skin complexion compared to tattooing a darker skin complexion with Hispanics, African Americans. Also natives, they have a very uh, dry skin complexion, uh, same thing as the indigenous from Mexico. So those skin complexions can definitely affect the way the black is applied. But as long as you know where your highlights and your contrast uh, is, that's it, that's all that matters. I just realized that that mirror was made for short people. <laughs> mm, that, one, that was weird. There you go. So the first thing I'm going to be doing to start this project is by applying my contrast first. With my solid black, I'm going to be applying all my dark areas and the background and starting with the fur around the face so I can make sure that the face looks bright because that's the one thing that I have to be careful with considering that it's a cover-up. I don't want it to make it look like it's super dark across the whole thing. So just using solid black is gonna be key in this and if I need medium tones, then I'll figure that out later on. But I first need to see how his skin reacts with solid black. Okay, you're good. Uh, so first thing I'm doing here with my 17 curve mag, I'm running at a 5.0 voltage and I'm using the corner of the mag to do the fur of the mane of the lion. Um, I'm using just the corner to make sure that I have a very thin uh, line across it and I create that feel like if there's a lot of fur going through it with, in a wavy uh, way, like if it's flowing and all that. The reason why I'm using a curved maggot is because it allows me to go thick and thin at any moment and it gives me more like a soft look. Once I get to the face area, that's when I can, I'm going to switch to a round liner uh, for it so I can do texture with it. But as in right now, with the bane, I'm just going to be using a uh, mag. I ended up switching to a 7 round liner. Uh, I feel like it was giving me a better texture than the Curve Mag. I wanted to see what kind of uh, texture it would give me, so as soon as I tried it, I decided to stick with it. And it's making me move faster, better precision, and uh, more contrast. And I don't want to speak for my client, but a little less pain maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also noticed that on the other side of his peck, the artist who did the wings, he added a whole bunch of white, and 10 years later, still looks pretty bright. For being 10 years, it, for me, it looks insanely bright. So what I'm gonna do is also take advantage of that and add it on the areas that need it to make sure that this face looks like it's glowing. So I'm gonna take advantage of that because now I know that his skin can retain white. So I'm gonna take advantage of that. This is a very important part of the chest piece because I did notice on the left side, he told me that an artist from California tried covering it up and he didn't know that he didn't have enough experience. He did pack white onto his skin and after 10 years, it's still looking really bright. So what this tells me is that even though the client didn't have enough experience, 
my client skin was able to hold on to the white highlights for over 10 years. That right there gave me the confidence to pack so much more white and make sure that this piece is vibrant. So what I'm gonna be doing is pack as much white as I can to make sure that this piece stands out from afar. So that way, whenever it heals, it's gonna compensate and it's gonna level up with my blacks and my light source. So by the end of this video, when I post the reveal, the piece is gonna be looking very bright, very white, vibrant but it doesn't mean it's gonna stay looking like that what I'm looking forward to is the future and the way the skin is gonna handle that white and balance it out with my black tones let me know how you feel okay I'm about to uh, touch the nipple. Maybe I shouldn't have said nothing. You would have maybe not even noticed. Let's <laughs> get it over with. All right, <laughs> let's go. So now that I'm about to start doing the face of the lion, I'm gonna start doing a whole bunch of texture. I wanna make sure that the texture gives it that il the illusion that it's fur. So in order for me to do that, I'm gonna be using my 14 round liner with a voltage of a 5.0, and I'm gonna be just brushing it across the whole thing, starting with the chin, and I'm gonna continue up to the whiskers. Uh, and I'm gonna start on the right side of the face. The reason why I'm starting on the right side of the face it is because the contrast is coming from this side and this is going to be my brightest part of the face. So doing this first would allow me to see how bright I can make this side of the face look. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn ain't that great. I don't want to go to work because my boss is a jerk and I'm not even that pay. I need a change in my life because I don't feel alive and there's nothing that makes me happy. Oh, hold my beer for a minute. I'm about to quit my job, cash in for a ticket. I'm going on a trip and I don't plan to visit. I'm going to stay there till I feel like I'm winning. Oh, and this is just the beginning. I need a big change, help me feel like living. I need a big swing, home runs I'm hitting and I'll never look back. Moving on till I get it all. And we all got dreams. We all want things. What you gonna do for it? How you gonna move for it? What you gonna be? And do you believe you can do anything? But what you gonna do for it? How you gonna move for it? What you gonna be? Check it out in the mirror. <laughs> You're winning already. You can, you, you can already feel it. Feel it yourself now. <laughs> Day one was amazing. I was able to figure out his skin complexion so I can make sure I cover that up completely. And it was a successful day. You can't see a thing. Now going on to day two, I'm gonna be doing a gorilla and I'm gonna make sure I add those textures, add those contrasts and highlights to make sure that the left side is fully covered up just like the right side. Um. Right now, I'm feeling good. <laughs> uh, yesterday was long, but I mean, you're going to make it through eventually. Uh, first half of the day went smooth. Second half of the day, I had to fight a little bit. But I mean, we take, we take ample breaks. So that's, that was definitely nice. Um, definitely crashed when I, get, when I got home. Was, I was tired. So today, 
Uh, we are doing a we're doing a gorilla on the left half of the chest. So I think I was just YouTubing cover-ups, and I think his videos were one of the first ones that I saw. I ended up following him on Instagram, and I followed him for a couple years. And his work like never ceased to to let you down or make you you know doubt that he wasn't that guy to get the job done. So uh, I guess it was on me at that point. I had to get my money right, get my time scheduled out, and finally made it out here. And he's definitely just like the videos, man. Yeah, he's upbeat, good, good vibes, good energy. Um, very personable guy. All right, so this is day two on this full chest cover-up. Yesterday was a successful day. And um, today's gonna be a little bit more relaxing just because now I know how to approach it, things to do. Uh, yesterday was very easy for me, so I'm just gonna do exactly what I did yesterday. And yeah, it's gonna be a very smooth day. Today we're gonna be doing a gorilla on the other side and we're gonna connect it right in the middle. Uh, so it looks very uh, symmetrical, very fashionable, and it's gonna stand out from afar because the faces are so legible and the features are so legible that you're gonna be able to tell exactly what it is from afar. That's exactly what we need. This area of the mouth, what I'm going to be doing is with the same needle, 14 round liner, I'm going to be using the scribble technique very lightly to kind of start creating this shape and give it texture because then I'm going to come back in with my highlights and really make this pop, make it look like it's glossy. So I want to make sure that I'm not going too dark, just enough. Taking your time is key in this area. I really like how his skin absorbs the ink, so it's a lot easier to tattoo. And it seems like my highlights are on the top over here. So that's why I'm starting from the bottom. Especially with all these wrinkles, you don't want to take away from the wrinkles. And if you go too dark, then the wrinkles are going to get even darker. So just taking your time, relax. Uh, doing the nose area is one of those pieces that I really have to make, uh, I need to enhance. So the way I'm going to approach the nose is by doing the same thing I did with the mouth. But this time I'm leaving a big gap of skin open right here so it can stand out. That's going to be key on the nose area because I need that to be the focal point of the face. And after I accomplish that, I'm going to come back with my highlights and really make it pop a little bit more but i gotta be i gotta be really careful i'm barely brushing the skin with the scribble technique taking it taking it slow just to make sure that it uh i don't go too dark either
starting the face here, I'm going to be using a 14 round liner and doing uh, the scribble technique here on the corner and we're going to just flow with it, following the texture of the fur. So I'm going to be following up the same direction of every hair, but also from time to time I'll, I will probably cover more ground by doing the scribble technique and then follow it up with the, with the same direction. Just so he has a little bit of variety and more texture and more to look at than just straight lines. So just switch it out from time to time. And I'm running my machine at a, a 5.0 like I always do. It gives me leverage to do more texture. As I get closer to the bottom, the direction of the hair changes a little bit. So then I'm gonna go from doing this to doing this. A very smooth transition. this area of the mouth what I'm going to be doing is with the same needle 14 round liner I'm going to be using the scribble technique very lightly to kind of start creating this shape and give it texture because then I'm going to come back in with my highlights and really make this pop make it look like it's glossy so I want to make sure that I'm not going too dark So the way I'm going to approach the nose is by doing the same thing I did with the mouth but this time I'm leaving a big gap of skin open right here so it can stand out. That's going to be key on the nose area because I need that to be the focal point of the face. How does it feel to be done? Bro, that's, that's fucking, that's fucking shit, yeah, the, the, the whole thing. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming back and watching this brand new video. I really appreciate you. And I got my client to send me a video uh, from home, from his phone. That way he has the natural light source. But the end result was just amazing. My client was just excited. So if you're a tattoo artist, I hope you learned something from this video. And if you're a tattoo enthusiast, I hope you were entertained. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.